Hold on, hold on. Hey, I'm Mike from Media Mics. I am here with William Mark McCullough, and we're going to be talking about the Savannah haunting. So, Mark, um, let's talk about how, how a Savannah haunting kind of came to life and how you ended up not, not, not only directing, but you wrote, produced, and co-starred in the film. Well, you know, my, my house had been uh, an area of, of supernatural you know, phenomenon for many decades, ever since I was a little kid. And uh, I had gotten out of high school and moved away. And I, I'd come back to Savannah uh, several years ago for some family reasons. And I noticed that the, the, the paranormal activity that was happening here was much more intense than it had been before. And my business partner, Alexis Nelson, had come from L.A. to Savannah to visit me. And I put her in the, uh, the upstairs bedroom that in the movies, the little girl's room. And she had a terrifying experience. So the next day she said, you know, you really need to take these things that, uh, that happened to you and your family and all the guests that have visited and turn that into a script. And, you know, I, I, I made my living as an actor for a long time and uh, had directed a little bit and, and you know, written quite a bit. Um, but it was just one of those things that I knew that for this movie particularly, I wanted to direct it because it was about, you know, it was based on experiences that happened to my family. And I knew that we couldn't bring in an outsider and tell the story that I knew so well because of my family's experiences here. Sure. And so how was it actually shooting in your own house? I mean, that must have been, you know, a little challenging. It was very challenging. Uh, taking away the supernatural stuff, just shooting in your house is rough. Um, you know, we, most of the houses in the film is just the way the house is, but there were a few little things that we had, we had built special for the movie. One of them was a hallway in front of my bedroom. And we knew that when we built it, I couldn't come from my bedroom out into the rest of the house. I'd have to go out the door that goes outside, walk around the house, come to the front door. And that was going to be the first thing we shot on the first day of the movie. And then we're going to tear the wall out and, you know, keep going. Well, we got shut down for COVID the next day. And we were shut down for five months. And we started back up. We got shut down in March. We got started back up in August. So during that five months, I couldn't go from my bedroom to the front of my house. <laughs> so I literally every day I'd have to walk out of the back door, go all the way around just to make coffee in the kitchen. So it was, uh, that part was crazy. <laughs> and it's just always hard, like having uh, 200 strangers in your house all day long, <laughs> every day is rough. Sure. Um, you know, and, and, uh, and then the fact that, you know, there was supernatural things going on. So some of the crew was really freaked out. A few of our actors got pretty scared. Um, but uh, for me, you know, I was at my house. I was sleeping here every night. So we'd be filming during the day, and I'm sleeping here at night. Uh, so that was a new experience as a filmmaker and as an actor, you know, sleeping in the place that I'm shooting at. And do you still experience any kind of paranormal activity in the house, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, just last week, there's some pretty intense things that were happening here at the house. Um, you know, it's gone through waves. When I first came back to Savannah, it was extraordinarily scary. Uh, so much so that I wouldn't walk upstairs at noon, middle of the day. Uh, I was so freaked out. We brought in a demonologist who got out that thing that was terrifying. And the things that were left, I could deal with, right? They, they freaked me out a little bit, but mostly it was mischievous. When I have friends over, you know, sometimes they get pretty scared, but I got used to it. Um, but there's, you know, a lot, I'm, I'm not a medium or anything, but a lot of the mediums that have come to the house have said that there's a portal in the upstairs bedroom that things can come through. And, um, you know, last several months, I think something's come through one of those portals because the, the nature of the haunting, it's getting dark again the way it was um, before we brought that demonologist in. Wow, that's wild. Yeah. So I guess, you know, um, how long did the film take to, f to actually, like what was the shooting? Um, how long did it take to shoot the whole film? Well, we started pre-production, uh, and, and pre-production lasted about a month. Okay. And uh, we were filming for 19 days. Again, we got shut down for five months during the middle of it because wow. of COVID. Right. And when we were shut down, we started working on a documentary about you know the history of the haunting and possible causes. Um, but but the actual filming was 19 days, so it was like three and a half weeks. Okay. Then once we wrapped up, you know, it was months and months of editing and music and sound and color, you know, all the stuff for post-production. So it was, it was a long process. 
And being an independent film, what would you say was the most challenging part for you on this project? Well, I think the beginning part was just finding investors, right? You know, to get people to, to write a check for you to make a movie, uh, I understand that's a, that's a big ask. And, you know, they, have to have, they have to have faith in your ability to turn a script into a finished movie and get it done and do it you know, on time, under budget. So that was the big part. That took a long time to find you know, some really great investors. Um, you know, our specific situation because of COVID hitting when it did, you know, we were one of the first 10 films in the country to shoot under the COVID protocols. Sure. And they were still trying to like figure them out when we were doing it, so it was really tough. Uh, the rules were pretty stringent. Uh, and obviously you always want more money and more time. You know what I mean? The more, sure. more time, more money right. you have, the better. It, yeah. So it, it, was, it was tough, but we had a great team. The actors were just great team players. You know, they, were, they showed up ready to work. Um, nobody was a pain in our ass. They were, they were super cool. The crew just worked like crazy. I mean, it was August in Savannah, Georgia, which is super hot. hot yeah. They weren't used to wearing all the PPE stuff, you know, the mask and the shields and all that. And so it was tough, you know, they, physically they weren't used to it. And uh, they were, you know, basically testing that stuff out with our film. So all of that made it made it tough, but I gotta say, man, like seeing seeing the movie on the big screen at the theater for the premiere, it was all worth it. Sure, oh, that's amazing, man. Yeah. And I have to ask, you know, where were the basement scenes shot? Because obviously the house doesn't have a basement, at least that I don't know about. <laughs> it doesn't have a basement. Uh, it does have a trap door that leads to some tunnels that go into the house, mm -hmm. um, but we obviously didn't shoot there because it wouldn't be enough space. Uh, we shot at this really cool place called the Powder Magazine. And it's an old building that, from the outside, it looks like an old castle, you know, made of big, thick uh, stones. And it was used to hold dynamite uh, so that if it were to explode, it would hold the explosion inside. Really? Yeah. And you can visit it in Savannah. It's like literally on a main road, but just in the woods, like maybe 200 feet off the highway. <laughs> uh, but we got special permission from the city to shoot there. And, uh, I mean, it was a perfect location. The only problem was... Uh, we were only allowed to have 10 people on the entire property at one time. And so wow. we had three actors in the scene. Right. Two of the actors had their moms there. So that's five people, then the director, and then the cinematographer and the sound person. So anytime a light needed to be changed or something needed to be moved, someone would have to leave mm -hmm. set for the other person to come in. Like we'd have to rotate out. That's a challenge. Because yeah. usually I mean, you have, I mean, literally 7,500 people running sure. around set. And right, you can right. only have 10. So that was tough. But we couldn't have asked for a, a, a more perfect location for the basement. Yeah, that was a cool basement scene. That was definitely creepy and so. Yeah. so. And um, you know, how did it kind of come about for you to have the real life interviews before and after the film? What was the decision on that? Well, like I said, you know, we're working this documentary, so we'd done a ton of interviews with with my family and with people who live in the house uh, and with all these experts and. Um, we had the movie playing in film festivals around the world, and we were very fortunate to win a lot of, you know, really, uh, uh, lot of awards for best film, best actor, best actress, things like that. And an old friend of mine from L.A. came to one of the film festivals that was in L.A. and she watched the movie, and she said that, you know, well, originally we just had the stuff, all the interviews at the end during the closing credits, okay. right? And I always kind of envisioned doing that because, because of the fact that it is inspired by things that happened in my real family. I wanted the audience to know, hey, this is this is really connected to real people. Because so many times movies say they're inspired by true events, and it's like, uh, you know, uh, the strangers being inspired by the Manson. It has nothing to do with right, that. Or yeah, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I think he's inspired by uh, John Wayne Gacy or something. But sure. so I wanted to show how it really was. It's the house where the things happened uh, to the family here. So originally it was just during the closing credits, but a, a good friend from L.A. watched the movie, and she, she it was her suggestion that we open the movie with some of the interviews so that immediately the audience sees these are real people that these things happen to. And then, like I said, we'd always planned on having the closing credits uh, with some of those interviews. Well, it was a good kickoff. I, I, you know, I thought it was a great addition to the film itself, so. And the cool thing too, you know, my, my business partner, Alexis Nelson, you know, she is a badass and she's, I mean, I couldn't do what I do without her. But usually producers don't get to wind up in the movie, and uh, yeah, she she cool. literally opens the movie, so that's yeah. really really cool. <laughs> so you mentioned that there's a you know a feature length documentary in the works, you know, um, 
And I guess, can you give us any kind of details about that and when we can expect it or, you know, anything, you know, from that, you know? Sure. Uh, so we, we had almost finished the documentary. And then after the movie came out, a lot of uh, paranormal investigators came to the house and we discovered a lot of new information. Uh, for those who have seen the movie, you know, uh, the fact that the, in the film there's a plantation that burns down during the Civil War plays a really big part in the story. I just made that up. And when we were working the documentary, we found out that actually happened. This, this was a plantation wow. and the, the plantation home had burned down during the Civil War. So we started finding all these additional things out, and so just started incorporating those into the documentary. And you know, the interesting thing is we've got so much stuff now that we're actually now talking about instead of doing it as a documentary, doing it as a miniseries. Oh wow! Yeah. So you know, we're covering the history of like what's happened to the people through the decades in this house. Uh, we brought in a voodoo priestess, uh, a, a lot of mediums. We brought in quite a few paranormal investigation teams, an Eastern Orthodox priest. To kind of look into the underlying, like, why, what's going on, what caused this. And then we cover what it was like for us to film in an active haunted house. So uh, we're getting close to finishing it up. Uh, I, I would suspect that it will be available uh, by the end of the year, certainly. I mean, obviously, once the movies or the series is done and gets sent to the distributor, we don't really have say on when they release it, but we'll be sending it to them in the next couple of months. Brilliant. That's so cool. And speaking of release, it, the film just got released in other countries like Russia. And, you know, I guess tell us about the process of that and how, you know, it, um, the process of getting the film seen, being seen internationally. I mean, that's, that's a pretty big accomplishment to have it shown in like over 900 theaters. Yeah. So, yeah, we just opened February 2nd in Russia on uh, 970 screens, uh, which we're thrilled about that. Uh, we opened in the Philippines on 48 screens. Uh, we're getting ready to open in April in uh, Australia. Uh, it's not opening theatrically, but they're doing a big DVD release and all the digital platforms. Uh, and they're working on a deal now for a big theatrical release in Latin America. Uh, you know, we, we work with Vertical Entertainment for domestic, and we had a good relationship with them. And normally you get a foreign uh, sales agent to kind of handle all the foreign markets. And we decided to go to, with Vertical for both of those. And so... Okay. Um, yeah, we're working with one of their guys out of London, and he actually today was the last day of the Berlin film market. So he was over there, like, you know, wow. pitching the movie to various countries and markets. Um, but it's cool, you know. We just kind of uh, we work with the distributor once they get the film. Uh, so, for instance, Russia reached out and they took a lot of the uh, you know behind-the-scenes photos. And uh, Alexis, my partner, had made a lot of really great social media posts uh, for the movie. And Australia and Russia both you know, requested those so they could use it to promote the movie over there. So, That's wild, man. Yeah, we've been pretty excited about it. And, okay, so besides the film, you know, Savannah Haunting, you've also appeared in a lot of high-profile, you know, TV shows like Cobra Kai, Walking Dead, Quantum Leap in just the last couple of years. I guess tell us about that experience for you and what do you enjoy most about acting? Well, I love acting. La acting is just fun, right? I mean, directing is work, right? <laughs> uh, write. I always like to joke that uh, I hate writing. I like having written a script because writing is brutal, right? I'm writing a script right now uh, that I can't, I can't get into, but uh, I hate it, right? Because <laughs> you're sitting there on the computer, <laughs> it just sucks. But you got to do it. <laughs> Producing is brutally hard. Uh, you know, I spoke to a high school class a couple months ago, a uh, class of young, you know, guys and gals who want to become producers and they're asking my advice and I was like well you get get some Kleenex because you're gonna go through a lot of ups and downs as a producer <laughs> whereas but the great thing about being producer director writer those things is you have control over what actually comes out right you have way more work but you have control with acting you show up you have fun but you have zero say in what comes on the screen and you know, for me, I, I would act for free. I don't run around telling people that because you know, <laughs> so I'll pay my bills. But but I just love it so much, and it's I mean, it's easy, right? I mean, every every little child, uh, we're we're talking about your daughter. Like acting exactly. comes easy to children because it literally is just playing make believe. There's a couple technical things you got to learn about the camera and lighting, things like that. Uh, but directing, writing, producing is it. You, you aren't just born with a talent to do that, right? That takes years of hard work and and. Now, I got to say, I learned how to be, I think, a pretty good filmmaker by working at the beginning of my career on not high-profile films, but really crappy, low-budget films, 
and learning how not to make a movie yeah, and exactly. learning how, you know, and sometimes I also work on some great low budget films, but many of them are not. And seeing the mistakes they made and seeing the things like, I should sit back and go, okay, I'm not gonna do that if I ever make a movie. And also seeing what, what gets a crew and a cast inspired to work for you and with you. Cause you can't, you know, you, I've seen those people like scream and yell at their crew or like belittle sure. their, their cast. That's just not how, I, I don't want to be treated that way. And I don't want to treat other people that way. So, so for me, it all kind of came together. Yeah, I started acting. It was the first thing I did. Um, and uh, from acting, I moved into filmmaking as well. But many of the things I learned from about filmmaking came through my journey as an actor. Now, who is some of you, like your, like if you had like a dream director or a dream cast that you want to work with? Anyone jumping out right now that, you know? Well, you know, I got to say, of all the actors I've ever worked with, uh, I mean, I've worked with really talented, really amazing actors. Uh, the one that inspired me the most was Tom Cruise. Uh, I spent a couple months working with him on a movie called American Made. And just the energy and the passion that guy has. I mean, he's been doing this for decades. Right. And every day, he had the energy of a kid who was his first day on set. You know? Wow. And now his expectations for excellence were top notch. I mean, he, he expects you to bring your best. But I just saw him be so kind to people who a lot of times folks kind of overlook, you know, extras and craft services, you know, sure. folks and, and the folks that, you know, don't get a lot of limelight in the movie making business. And I saw him go out of his way to make those people feel appreciated and and feel like they were really a part of the team. Hmm. And I was like, you know, this guy's been he's been at the top of his game for decades and he still takes the time to say a nice word to an extra or to a makeup artist. And uh, so that's a guy I'd work with again in a heartbeat. Um, but there's a lot of folks, you know. I mean, I, there's there's so many talented, wonderful people out there that I'd like to work with. And a lot of them, you know, I did a movie with Mahershala Ali, and I can say without doubt, I worked with him when he was still on, um, gosh, what was that Netflix show uh, with Kevin Spacey, the the DC oh, House of Cards. House of Cards. So he was on House of Cards, and he was my favorite character on the show. Sure. So I show up in this movie called uh, Free State of Jones. Didn't know he's the actor I was working with, because he wasn't a big name at that time, right? Sure. And I see him, I was like, oh, okay, this is the House of Cards guy. Awesome, I'm excited. <laughs> well, I'm doing this scene with him. He was hands down the best actor I've ever worked with in my life. Wow. Like, there were a couple of takes where it's just him and I, like, you know, face to face, and it's just, I'm playing this horrible, racist guy, and he's playing this former slave. and. I got so caught up in his acting as an audience member that I forgot I had lines. <laughs> and you know, so it's my turn to talk and I'm just sitting there watching this guy and the director's like, what, what are you doing, Mark? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> um, and, and, I, and I'll say this too, one of the, speaking of kindness, again, I was, I was playing this horrible racist and I had to say the worst things you can imagine that a white guy would have to say to a black guy, oh, right? Man, sure. And I was so uncomfortable, and especially because he's such a great actor and I had so much respect for him. And he could see that I was very uncomfortable. So he takes me to the side, he puts his arm around me, he says, Mark, it's just make-believe, man. Don't worry about it. And so we spent all day like with me just being a horrible human being. And at the end of the day, he comes up and gives us a big hug and he says, you did a good job. Oh, that's amazing. You know, and he I took that, like, that awkwardness and that you know, uncomfortableness away and let me do my job um, because he's an utmost professional. And I mean, I would love to work with him as a filmmaker. That's amazing, man. Yeah. I love it. And, you know... My wife wanted to throw in a question. She wanted to know, you know, you've done a lot of interviews around the film Savannah Haunting and your experiences and whatnot. And, you know, what do you wish people would have asked you about more? Like, is there anything that you've ever had that you wish, you know, I've never been asked that question or I've always wanted to talk about this and never have anything ever? Sure. Yeah. So one of the things that, that from the very beginning, uh, I thought about a lot before we made the movie, was the nature of the haunting. Like, okay. what is the haunting? And we kept it purposely vague because you know, we envision a much bigger story that we'd like to eventually tell, right? But uh, people usually don't ask me, I think they normally assume that the bad characters in the movie are the ghost of the dead people who died in the house. And I can say that there are no ghosts in a Savannah haunting. Um, so that's something that, you know, I find it interesting. Now other people may not find it that interesting, but, uh, just kind of the nature of the mythology of the haunting. That's cool. I definitely dig it. And do you have, um, any other plans to direct again? And is, and do you have any other projects in the works that you could talk about? 
definitely plan to direct again. Uh, Sweet. Yeah, I, uh, my partner and I have quite a few films on our slate that we're going to do. Um, my thing is I only direct things that I write that I know okay. really, really well. So we have, we have uh, a lot of great scripts that I didn't write that we're looking for really good directors. Um, we do have a couple that, that I plan to direct. Anything associated with the Savannah Haunting I'm going to direct because, again, it's my baby. You know, I spent sure. so many years doing it. But, but also, directing is a huge, huge job, and I don't mind uh, having other really talented people come in and do it and me kind of oversee the producing with Alexis and taking a break from the directing side for a little bit. I appreciate it, man. That's amazing. That's all the questions I got. Cool. I appreciate the time, man. And if you have a chance, definitely check out It's Savannah Haunting. It's available on all streaming platforms. It's a great film, and, uh, you know, we highly recommend it. So, Yeah, I appreciate you chatting with me. It's fun. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it.